Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, I'm Matt and in this episode I wanted to talk about deploying React applications to production. But before we get started, please hit the like button and subscribe so more viewers can watch it and deploy their applications to production. Let's get started. So one of the biggest problem is when you start your React application, you can simply develop it on your local machine, you just install create React app and you can continue on this. But in every application lifecycle, the time comes to deploy the application to production. And unfortunately, most of our application, React applications, are started with Create React App. And by default, it doesn't offer any suitable solution to actually deploy application to production. It's not clear how to deploy it to AWS, to Azure, or any other cloud provider. You need to find out on your own. And usually, it's not that trivial. Imagine that you have some API which is protected against cross domain requests. So you either need to create some proxy or host it on the same domain, but it's not always that obvious and often it's not even possible. And imagine that sometimes your APA requires an API key and then what? You don't want to share your API key with other users because some user can abuse it and either flood the API with some tons of requests or steal some data which wasn't for them. One of the feasible options is to build backend for frontend service like a middleware which will proxy the request and filter the data we don't want to share with the users. But in this episode, I don't, didn't want to use this option because it's always required. I actually found a case where we don't need to do this and we are going to use simple Nginx service to proxy the API request through it and we are going to filter the API keys and all information so users will not know even what API they consume. Before we get started, I need to tell you some things. So for deployment, we are going to use Docker and we are going to deploy it to AWS, which stands for Amazon Web Services. So it's good if you have some knowledge about them. Otherwise, you might feel lost during this tutorial. Another thing is that this solution is not going to work if you use any method of server-side rendering. It's simply not designed for it. So just have that in mind and let's get started now. This is the simple application I made to show you how to deploy React applications to production. We are going to use Docker and Nginx to do so and we'll deploy it to AWS, which stands for Amazon Web Services. But first thing first, the code is available on GitHub so you can play around and try to do it on your own. And we are going to use AWS CLI tools, which we'll use to push Docker images into AWS repository. So you need to have it before we get started. So we have this API, which is protected against the course across domain um, requests. And it also requires to pass the API key and also the file type. Like this is basically what there will be the output of the response. By default, it is XML, and we want to use JSON because it's natively supported by JavaScript. And of course, the API key is something which we want to protect so nobody steals it because then somebody could do some fraudulent behavior and the provider could disable our API. And so we no longer will be able to use it. So we really want to protect this information because it is sensitive. And as you can see, this API isn't ideal. It will be quite hard to use it. So we have two options. Either we build the middleware, like a backend, which will simply provide the AP, proxy APIs to this API and uh, renders it on the front end. Or we can simply configure the Nginx to proxy our request into this domain. And in this tutorial, we are going to actually use Nginx rather than building API, a separate backend because it's not required. Obviously, we will need to create a configuration for the Nginx and we don't want to do it on our own. The best way to get a template for Nginx config, it will be just uh, intercepting from the, some Docker image. So let's try to do this. We need to just type in our command line docker run dash dash name Nginx dash dash rm dash i dash t Nginx and now we are logged in into the 
Docker container. And we need to just go to etc, nginx, and here we have all configuration files. So basically I copied from here and we are going to use them in our application. So instead of doing this right now, to make it shorter, I will directly copy it into my environment. So let's go back to code. And now we need to create a directory called container. And inside of it, we need to re reflect the same path as the Docker image has, so etc nginx. So let's go, go back and let's create the directory etc inside of it. And let's create the directory nginx inside of etc. And here we need to configure, uh, create an nginx.conf file. And let's paste the information here. And this is our nginx configuration. So the only custom thing I added is basically this snippet, which will proxy the API into the API .org thread series, and it will also append the following parameters into the every request, each and every request. So we will not need to pass the API keys and file type on the URI params. And it's great. As you can see, the API keys in the brackets, and this is not supported by default by Nginx. So we actually need to rename this file to nginx.template. And later on, we'll convert it on the fly to nginx.conf, replacing the variable API key with actual API key. So now we already have the configuration and we need to create now the docker file in the main directory so we create docker file and now we are going to use the default nginx so we type from nginx we are going to copy the container directory into this image so we can have actually our configuration there and we also are going to copy build directory to to this container so we can actually use the static files over it. So let's do it. So it's build slash US USR slash share slash nginx HTML. And we need to define the variable called API key. And by default it will be empty. And now we need to define the command. And this is the hard one. We cannot use the default one because we want to replace the variables. So we are going to use bin bash uh, with the custom command. And it will be, we are going to use nf subst, which will help us to substitute the environment variables with something. So now we need to pass the variable we want to transfer. And we are going to use etc nginx slash nginx dot template. So exactly the file we used into this uh, command. And the output will be etc nginx dot nginx dot conf. And we are going to also start up the server afterwards. So daemon of And now we need to create a uh, AWS repository to actually store our images there. So uh, we can do it by typing AWS uh, ECR, which is stands for Elastic Container Repository, create repository, that's the repository name. Uh, let's call it React to AWS. So that's just region. Uh, let's start it in US East 2. Now AWS is creating a repository for us. Okay. Now we actually have it. 
now let's open our AWS console because I wanted to copy some commands from there. So this is my AWS management console and I'm going to open section containers and uh, Elastic Container Registry. As you can see, I have a new repository here, which I actually created from my command line. And I'm going to press this circle and then view push commands. And here I have actually all commands which are required to push the Docker image into my repository in AWS. So I'm going to copy the first one. Let's run it in the console. In the middle, let's copy the other one. As you can see, login succeeded. So actually everything works. Let's build the Docker image again. Okay, it was built successfully. Now we need to tag the image. So it's actually pushed into the right repository because in Docker, we need to reference the repository by specifying before the Docker image. So it's very important to do this step. Let's tag. And now let's push. And now we are pushing our image into the repository. It will take a while. So now our Docker image is pushed, so we can actually try to deploy it to AWS. So we go to back to AWS console, so we can close it. Let's open the main page. This time we are going to select Elastic Container Service, and we are going to press task definitions of the, on the right hand side. So I'm not going to explain all of these options because there are plenty of them. You can find many good articles or on free code camp explaining what's everything here, but I'm just going to show you how to deploy it. So I'm going to create a new task definition. Uh, we choose Fargate. Next step. We are going to call it React AWS to AWS task. Task role is uh, none we go lower uh, we need to define the task size and i want to use this as small as possible because it's simple nginx and nobody's going to use it we don't need any sophisticated configuration so let's choose the simplest one and now we need to press create i guess yeah let's press create Okay, no, no, no. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. I forgot to add the container, sorry. And now we need to copy the URL from the previous. So I need to actually go back to my console and I will need to actually copy the, the URL. So I'm going back to the container registry. I open my registry. Here you see I have my image tag. So let's copy the URI. Let's go back to here. I copy the image URL. Let's call it aw react lws yes soft limit yeah yes yeah, so limit let's say 64 for the mappings we are going to use port 80 and we need to define an environment variable, which is actually our API key. Let me copy mine. And that's it. Let's press add. And now we can actually create the image. Let's see. Okay, we have our task. Now we go to clusters. We press uh, create cluster. Um, let's press networking only. Uh, React to AWS cluster, let's call it. We don't need any configuration here. 
this view cluster. Now you can see our cluster configuration. So we can actually go to tasks. Uh, we can press run new task. And we are going to use Fargate. And all of this configuration are actually okay. So we need to configure our uh, virtual private network. So let's choose VPC, the only option we have. Subnets, let's choose the first one. And that's it. Let's press run task. And now, as you can see, our task is provisioning. You can refresh. It will change into running soon. Okay, now it's running. Let's open it. Uh, sorry, wrong link. I supposed to press the next one, the previous one, the other one, this one. And now we have our public IP here. So let's copy it. Let's open our browser. And here is our website. So I'm going to show you that actually IP is my proper IP address, which I actually configure in the ECS. So exactly this one. And that's the application. So everything actually works. So it's deployed. I didn't really want to explain you all of those details about Amazon Cloud because it's a broad topic. There are really tons of configuration which are very, very specific to some certain types of clusters. And really free code camp offers so good tutorial for it. So you can actually find this under in the description under the video. So please find it there. And that's it for today. I hope now you know how to deploy your application to production because every successful app needs to face their users. Otherwise, it would not be successful and it will never pay itself. So this is a natural step that you build the application and then you release it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button or dislike. If you didn't like the video, it, you don't find it helpful. And also subscribe to get more content. And if you have any questions or comments, please write a comment below. Thank you.